a lot of the early movements, particularly around kind of community politics, was about access to the means of production and distribution, i.e. how can you make a poster, you know, to actually engage or communicate with people. So you had things like the Lenthal Road Workshop, which is where this poster was done, and that was silt screened. And there, wasn't, there was no other way to do it. You know, if you wanted to publicise something, there wasn't an easy way to do it. You had, to, you had to make it, really, unless you had enough money to pay for a printer, and mostly we didn't have any money. This particular poster, which has three colours, you'd have to print each colour, put it on a rack. If you're doing a hundred of them, say, it, then you have to do 300 altogether and try to make sure they're all in the right position as well. It was a, a real mix of people with lots of different aspirations, different skill sets. Anti-deportation campaign, London Lesbian Line, Child Minders Association, Battersea Black Women's Group, people ex-offenders from prison, a whole range of alternative um, groups and practices. Sharing your skills and yeah the idea of, of you know doing things together we you know we, we would be stronger and, and you know rejection of all, all sorts of things so that those ways of working were a, re were a rejection of conventional ways of working and hierarchical um, structures those, those ways of kind of being um, creative together were a, a real rejection of, of sort of art school ideas and that idea of, of the artist and the individual. A lot of women that had been to art school, it was, you know, they were very male dominated spaces at that, at that time. It's really changed, I think. It's certainly in my experience now of art schools has changed. But, you know, the male artist, the male genius, you know, um, and even that idea that, you know, women could be artists, I mean, they'd, they'd, they'd experienced that. Women really sidelined, really marginalised there. You, know, you couldn't be a serious artist if you were if you were a woman. Um, so there were lots of things there that you know I think that were happening within these women's creative projects, which were questioning all of all of all of that stuff. Um, thinking, well, actually, we want to do something really, really different um, and work in a very different way. Quite often, you'll get three people come in from a group to work on a poster. The bloke will immediately take over the design, or he'll immediately take on the printing. Women come in and they see us doing these things, and once you start seeing yourself as somebody who can do things, then you're in a position to take control of your life. Now it's digitally done, but then we had to sort of paste on the resist That's material, the and then you'd have a, a negative on film, so it would lay it on the top, and where the ultraviolet light came through, it would... Um, that, that but these kind of baked onto the onto the mesh. So the bits that were weren't baked on, when you washed it out, that was clear. So that's where the ink would come through. So it's it's a photographically based um process. So it, but you could also just do lines, mark making. Mm. So it is a negative positive process. We did use paper sometimes as well for stencils. And for particularly for screen printing onto T shirts and things like that. And then I think we had two screen printing beds and then we had all the racks. So I suppose normally we do a run of about 200 prints, which at the time felt like a lot. Yeah. But obviously it was a really a cottage industry. Um, but I think that's one of the things that was great about it, that you could <coughs> totally understand the process. There was no mystery to that process. It was very physical. You actually felt that 200 prints once you'd done them. And if it was three colours, you're like, whoa. <laughs> You really felt like you'd achieved something. In Hackney, there were two main sorts of poster, really. The Chats Palace sort of hand-done type of thing, which was short runs, and then there were the vast uh, posters for reggae sound systems or whatever. So it tends to be a size difference, really. You'd always get, those posters always seemed to be in black and white, offset life head in, in A1, and all the screen printed posters would be in A2, or, and then you got the f whatever little sticker posters or flyers which would be in a smaller size. Okay, and lift, lift it, up. it up, flood it back. Can you back that down? That's fine. Lovely. Is it centered? Oh, oh yes, yes, it's perfect. perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> I don't think 
I needed that. Actually, that's pretty good, that considering really I wasn't looking. <laughs> that's not bad. The orange on that purple. I don't think it'll sell, but never mind. <laughs> what about the pale blue, then? Uh-huh. And then the peach. That's a weird colour. Yeah, thank you. Oh, oh, that's oh, that's 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 oh, wow. I still can't believe I've done it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, really, I just can't believe I've done it. Basically, you can see from all the colours, I mean, the fluorescents are, you know, if you're fly posting, you want the poster to be glaringly obvious, really. So I used to tend to always do stuff mostly in primaries um, with very sort of black outline detail because they seem to be the ones that you could read from across the street. A bucket, wallpaper paste, posters. And usually, didn't we, sometimes we had a car, sometimes we didn't. And we'd creep around at night, when probably actually it'd been better during the day, but anyway, we did it at night, finding the most prominent places possible to slap the posters up, as many as possible. Well, really, the people who came just took their posters because they they had an idea, they had a, an event. There was a couple of posters, ones at the Victorian Albert Museum, where we were advertising the um, the facilities, which is a beautiful poster. And you know, doing the workshops at, at you know at a, an event, that was a form of advertising as well. Mm. So people would see your products and see what, imagine how it could work with their event or their particular time of workshop. So that's a form of advertising. Because in a way, once we'd made the posters, we sort of let, let them go. And I suppose we'd never realised until, I suppose now really, how important just having some of that legacy left. Whereas it, before it was a sort of ephemeral thing, a poster for an event, and you weren't really expecting mm. that poster to live on, because that was the advertising. And it was up to the, whoever came to distribute that advertising that we, we'd help them create. It's, a very, it's, it's almost, it's a handmade object. The lovely thing about posters is, is that they produce from nothing. There's a blank sheet of paper and then you make this lovely coloured image which has got a meaning. You know, it's not a sort of, it's not, it's not an artwork for sale, it is advertising a gig, but it's lovely the fact that you can make it into an artefact of, of interest in its own right. It's really nice to see that process having its own resurgence in a, quite an artistic and interesting way. So you can combine some of the technological advances with the actual mm. hands-on printmaking. So all the preparation can be done digitally, it's safer, cleaner, and then you have um, safer chemicals at the end. It's, it's a, a good marriage between the two in any printmaking. And I think that all the incredible gentrification that's gone on in Hackney and how its, it's presentation is completely different and there's the sense being given over by the new set of you know, creatives that here that nothing was happening in Hackney beforehand. I was, it was really wanting to react to that in terms mm. of, you know, there's a lot of political activities, different ways of working. Just to say that there was other things going on which, which was directly op opposed to gentrification and that money-led way of negotiating, negotiating your way in the world. So it's much more collective working, what Brecker was saying, that though that activism, your art practice, and politics were very closely knit, knitted together. And that was going on in Hackney, along with theatre, publishing, all sorts of creative activities. So it was, for me, it's very much about saying, you know, there's this history as well going on quite a long way back. We were here, we were doing it. Yeah, <laughs> and we're still doing it. If you're interested, there's always something going on somewhere in Acme.